For the last of the major players for Digimon Data Squad, this set review episode is pretty much all the purple cards that are being released in the set. Because, let's be real, a majority of them kind of just go with one another. First off, Kapurimon is the purple egg of the set, a Digimon that on deletion you may trash one card in your hand to delete one of your opponent's level 3 Digimon. Honestly, I wish Bandai had busted this a little more and made it so that for every 10 cards you have in trash, increase the level by 1. But overall, I'll stick with Demimaramon, thank you. Fastcomon is a dark animal Digimon that on deletion draws one and trashes one. Its inheritable end of your opponent's turn once per turn does the same thing of drawing one and trashing one. In a more defensive purple deck, I could see this card being valuable as you don't have to attack in the case of starter deck Gabumon. Falcomon Returns is not a searcher, but a Digimon that gives one of your purple Digimon retaliation until the end of your opponent's turn. And like Falcomon from EX4, the Inheritable Trash is one of your opponent's card in hand of their choice, if the Digimon was deleted by something other than battle. The last level 3 is Protogizomon, a Digimon that deletes your level 2 Digimon to reduce the play cost by 1. On play, draw 1 and trash 1. This Digimon can't digivolve and on deletion by placing 2 cards with Gizumon in their name from your trash at the bottom of your deck in any order, you can play Gizumon AT from trash without paying its cost. Oh great, more artificial Digimon. This effect means you can utilize Proto Gizumon, Gizumon AT, and Gizumon XT. Porkupamon is another on play and on delete Digimon that lets you delete your opponent's level 3 Digimon. Honestly, the entire line at this point is just a toolbox for purple, but I don't see it viable in sealed. Peckmon returns as a blocker, meaning if you want that hand trash effect, it's viable to force battle with your opponent. Its inheritable is also the same as all purple Falcomons and Peckmons. Gizumon AT moves up in the world from Proto Gizumon by deleting a level 3 Digimon in play to reduce the cost by 4. Being the next Digimon in action, it draws 2 and trashes 2 from your hand. And like Proto Gizumon, it can't digivolve and has the same on deletion effect that lets you place 2 cards with Gizumon in their name from your trash to the bottom of the deck and then play XT from trash without paying its cost. Astamon returns as a Digimon who on play, and when digivolving, you may delete one of your other Digimon, and this Digimon may digivolve into a Digimon with Belfimon in its name from your hand without paying its digivolution cost. This effect won't be useful in sealed, but for Belfimon, expect this to be run as a 4 of. Chromon adds another option to Ravemon decks, being a bird type Digimon that synergizes with the EX4 one. When attacking, if you have a Tamer in play, you may Digivolve into a Ravemon from trash by paying its Digivolution cost. Not only do you have easy access to Ravemon in your hand now with EX4, but the trash as well. The fact that you have two options makes it all that better. On deletion, you may play one level 4 or lower purple Digimon from trash without paying its cost. Meaning with a memory fixture, you can Digivolve into a Ravemon from trash when attacking. End of attack with EX4, you can delete it and do another damage with Digimon like in Kakumon Promote, for the Rush Factor. And then there's Gizumon XT, the level 5 Gizumon. This Digimon can have its play cost reduced by 6 when you delete a level 4 Digimon. This Digimon has Blocker and an on-play effect of playing Akihiro Kurata from Trash without paying its cost. All turns, this Digimon can't Digivolve, and on deletion, you may play one Proto Gizumon from Trash to start the whole process all over again. So far, Gizumon is just a bunch of memes, not to mention I'll call it garbage for the fact that it's literally screen cap art. Yeah, that's right Bandai, I'm calling you out for lazy screen cap cards when you hire artists to do a majority of your cards. But overall, I'd say they're decent for pinch blockers or effects in a sealed setting. Level 6 wise, there's three. Belfimon Sleep Mode, who has an on-play effect now in digivolving effect that lets you play a Belfimon Rage Mode from your trash, at the top of this Digimon's Digivolution cards. This Digimon can't attack, and isn't affected by your opponent's card effects until the end of your opponent's turn. While true, it still can be attacked with even effects like Raid. Oh wait! It also has an opponent's turn effect that once per turn, when your opponent's Digimon attacks, you may trash two cards to end the attack. Never mind, it's fine. Ravemon returns with a Digivolution cost of 4. This Digimon has an end of turn effect that deletes this Digimon. And again, you must have a Digimon with Bird or Avian in its traits to play it back from the trash. On deletion, it simply lets you play a Falcomon or Keenan Cryer from trash or hand without paying their costs. Personally, I'm still a fan of the EX4 version, so if you haven't picked up your alt arts yet, do it soon. 
because I have a feeling it's going to go up. In the sealed setting, it's alright, but you really need Falcomon, Peckmon, and Chromon to do anything with it. As for Belfimon Rage Mode, you can digivolve your Sleep Mode from this Digimon for one. Start of your main phase, delete all of your opponent's level 5 or lower Digimon. If you have 6 or less cards in hand, this Digimon gets plus 3000 DP and Security Attack plus 1. For the Sin of Sloth, his effect feels more like... Wrath to me? But I guess that's what Rage Mode means. End of attack once per turn by deleting one of your other Digimon, unsuspend this Digimon. This is one of the first level 6 Digimon that has a 14,000 DP stat line. But even so, its Digivolution cost is 6, meaning you're better off trashing this Digimon and then getting it back with Belfimon Sleep Mode's effect. Remember that with Rage Mode's Inheritable, at the end of your opponent's turn, you trash the top card of this Digimon to, in a way, cheat out Rage Mode. The last Digimon is Ravemon Burst Mode, returning a Keenan Cryer from field to hand in order to Digivolve for free from Ravemon. But if you do, at the end of your turn, you trash the top card of this Digimon. When Digivolving, look at your opponent's hand and trash one card. If they have 7 or fewer cards in hand, add the top card of their security stack to hand. When attacking by returning a Digimon card from your opponent's trash to the bottom of their deck, you delete all Digimon with the same name as the Digimon returned by the effect. It feels like an Omnimon-esque effect, but at the same time, it's not very often some cards are treated as other Digimon. Its utility is also limited by Digimon in the trash. Overall, I don't have the same oomph as I do with Shine Greymon, Mirage Galgamon, and Rosemon Burst Mode. Keenan Cryer returns as a 3-cost Tamer, that on play makes it so that your opponent may trash one Tamer card or option card from their hand. If they don't, you gain a memory and draw one card. A great ex antibody like effect with a draw in security. Additionally, on your opponent's turn, when a Digimon is played by an effect, you may suspend this Tamer to gain one memory. This is okay, but not all decks play Digimon by an effect. Regardless, I think the on-play is better, and the opponent's turn effect is very niche. Akihiro Kurata, the other purple tamer, was a villain in Digimon Data Squad. Your turn when you would play a Digimon with Belfimon in its name, delete one of your Digimon with Gizumon in name and reduce the play cost by the deleted Digimon. End of opponent's turn, once per turn, draw one, then trash one card from your hand. Then by placing this Tamer under one of your Digimon with Belfimon in its name as its bottom Digivolution card, delete one of your opponent's level 6 Digimon. Akihiro adds a lot to Belfimon decks, who are very competitive in Japan's meta. The best part that since this card and Belfimon Sleep Mode are rare and uncommon respectively, you have a shot to add removal to your deck. But do keep in mind it targets specifically level 6 Digimon, not level 6 or less. Unfortunately, there had to be some balance. The last card is Gift of Darkness, a 6 cost option card that deletes one of your opponent's level 6 or higher Digimon. Then you may Digivolve one of your Digimon into Belfimon Sleep Mode from Trash without paying its Digivolution cost. Its security effect makes it so that you can delete one of your opponent's Digimon with level less than or equal to a card that you trash from your hand. Decent removal, but better in security if you ask me in terms of limitations. As more decks utilize level 7s, this is honestly really good. For deck profiles, Belfimon plays with your typical purple cards, utilizing predominantly the Icemon package to fill up cards and trash quickly. Demi Marimon again, the Supreme Egg here. There's honestly not much to say about this deck because it's combo oriented, which in my mind plays more mid to late game. In regards to Ravemon, this deck gets a number of upgrades with new members, doubling the number of Bird and Avian Digimon from before. Luckily, because Belfimon and Ravemon are purple, it also has a leg up against decks in the format from Crossheart, Blue Flare, and even the new Yggdrasil deck because of Psychmon. Tomorrow, I'll be going over the last of the Data Squad members before jumping to miscellaneous support. This is Digipanda, logging out.